Chapter 10. The Siege Perilous Empty Seats at the Round Table Many years had passed. New knights had come to Camelot, and old knights had died. Some knights died in quests, and others died in battle. There were now empty seats at the Round Table. Sir Bedivere and Sir Bors sat on Arthur's right. To his left sat Kay and Gareth. Opposite him sat Lancelot and Percival and Gawain. But there was an empty seat on either side of Gawain, and an empty seat beside Sir Bors. "'Who shall sit in these empty places?' asked Arthur, and he looked at the siege perilous which had been empty for twenty-four years. No man had ever dared to sit on the siege perilous because of Merlin's warning. "'He who sits on this chair will die.' Mordred and Galahad At Whitson, the holy hermit Nacians returned to Camelot. He brought a young man who was nearly sixteen years old. Morgana le Fay also brought a young man to Camelot. Morgana wore the clothes of a holy woman. Her head was covered so that no man could see her face. Nacians the hermit spoke to Arthur. I am Nacians of Carbonek. I bring a squire to your court. I hope he will become a knight. His name is Galahad. I have raised him as my own son. I do not know his father and mother. King Peles sent him to me when he was a few days old. Galahad had a fair and open face. He looked like Lancelot, but Lancelot was worldly and proud. Galahad looked more like a priest than a knight. A quiet young man with a bright and peaceful smile, Galahad was the son of Lancelot by Blanchefleur of Carbonek, though no one knew this secret. Then the nun, whose face was hidden, stepped forward. I am Morgana of Glastonbury, she said to Arthur. I bring a squire to your court. I hope he will become a knight. His name is Mordred. Mordred was short and dark and broad. He had the body of a bear and a friendly smile, a smile that masked his evil mind. Men liked him at once. They said that he reminded them of King Arthur. Arthur had never known his father. He did not know that Mordred looked like Uther Pendragon, and he did not know that Mordred was his own son by Morgana. Also, he did not know that Morgana of Glastonbury was his own half-sister. Morgana le Fay brings evil to Camelot. Morgana le Fay knew most of Merlin's secrets. She was the wisest woman in the world, but her magic had no power over Arthur. While Arthur wore the sword Excalibur, Morgana could not touch him with her magic, but Morgana still had the power to make trouble in the court. The knights of the round table stood up and welcomed Galahad and Mordred. We need young men, said Bors. Welcome to Camelot. All the knights and ladies walked and talked in the hall. Then it was time for the feast. Be seated, knights and ladies, said Arthur, and let our new squires take a seat at the round table. There are two empty places. Then Morgana worked her magic of confusion. The knights and ladies took their places, talking and laughing with joy. They paid no attention to the new squires Mordred and Galahad. Mordred spoke to Galahad. There is an empty place on either side of Sir Gawain, he said. Please sit on Sir Gawain's right, and I will sit on his left. You are very kind, said Galahad. I thank you. And Mordred smiled an evil smile. Galahad sits on the siege perilous. All the knights and ladies sat down at the table, and only then did Arthur see that something was wrong. There were no empty places opposite him at the table. No man had dared to sit on the siege perilous for twenty-four years, but now Galahad sat in the chair, and it was no longer empty. The Second Vision of the Holy Grail As Arthur saw this, there came the sound of a great bell from above the earth. Then music came from high above, together with a sound of voices singing. The hall was filled with light, and the knights and ladies looked at one another in astonishment. Then three ladies came into the hall. They were dressed in white, and their faces were covered with white cloth. 
The first woman carried a spear. The second woman carried a dish. And the third woman carried a cup that was filled with light. The light was so bright that the knights and ladies could not see the cup. But they were filled with joy and peace. They looked at the cup in wonder. Only Mordred hid his eyes in his hands. He could not look upon the holy cup, and he wept. Mordred was unworthy. A voice spoke softly and clearly. Seek the grail. Only the purest knights can find the grail. The vision faded, and all the men and women in the hall were silent and astonished. They looked at King Arthur. The Quest Arthur spoke. Who will seek the grail? he asked. This is the highest and holiest quest that has come to Camelot. Perhaps it will be the final quest of many knights. Seek the grail for the honor of Logres and the glory of God.